Hey guys, I hope you are staying safe and healthy out there. Over here on my end, I'm really feeling the Halloween spirit and I'm feeling extra creative lately. So what I thought we would do is make some Halloween chocolates using candy melts and Halloween chocolate molds. As an adult, I really enjoy doing this, but if you have kids in the house, they will love this. And the best part about it is you're not gonna need the stove at all, so you don't have to worry about them getting burnt. Everything is gonna be done in the microwave. I'm gonna run through a list of supplies that you'll need, and then I'm gonna run through the entire process from start to finish, and I'm gonna show you this several different times using all the candy molds that I have. Then at the end, you guys will get to check out my results. So without any further chit chat, let's just jump straight into the mess. Let's go through a list of materials. The first thing I would suggest is some sort of plastic cover or tablecloth to protect the surface you're working on because this is going to get messy. Next up are candy molds. I buy these at Michael's every year leading into the holiday. If you can wait till it gets closer to the holiday, they tend to go on sale. Before the sale, they're $4.99 a piece. Once the sale starts, they're usually around $2.99. And they always have really cute designs. For this batch, we have eyeballs, a witch's hat, brains, headstones, fingers, that I like to turn into zombie fingers. We have ghosts and we have mice or rats. The next thing you're gonna need is chocolate and I am using some chocolate that I already have open. I got these at Michael's as well for $2.99 a bag. Sometimes there's sales on them. They'll come down a little bit. Michael's has two brands. They have the Sweet Tooth Fairy Meltables and they also have the Wilton Candy Melts which come in a ton of different colors and they are also $2.99 a bag unless there are sales. You're also gonna need a set of food safe brushes. These are cake decorating brushes. They work great for decorating chocolates as well. I got this six set of brushes on Amazon for $7.09. I will leave the link to these below if you're interested in checking them out. Then we have these silicone chocolate melting pods. I've used them before. They are fantastic. I found them on Amazon, so I'll leave a link for these down below as well. But you'd open them up, you throw in some of the chocolate melts, close it back up, throw it in the microwave for a couple of seconds, pull it out, stir the chocolate around, put it back in the microwave for a few more seconds, take it out, stir it around, and you keep doing this until you get the chocolate to a nice, melted, smooth consistency. These things are excellent. They come in a three pack on Amazon for $10.99, plus shipping if you don't have Prime. I love these because if you're using a mold that requires a bunch of different colors, you can put one color in each pod and it just makes working with the chocolate so much easier because you're not dealing with one melting container and constantly switching out colors and washing out containers. It just makes the whole thing go a lot easier and smoother. These are definitely worth picking up. I'd also suggest a spoon and a knife. The spoon will be used to mix the melted chocolate in the pods in between microwaving and the knife will be used to level off the chocolate once you've poured it in the molds. Just want to add this one item before we go on to the last optional one. You're going to need a sharp knife and this is going to help you clean the back of the chocolates, getting rid of any high points, any excess chocolate, just before you pop them out of the molds. There is one final supply that can be optional. I am choosing not to use them this time, but those are lollipop sticks. As you can see, some of the molds are set up to use them. They have these little indents, so you'd pour the chocolate in, you'd stick the stick in, and the chocolate would harden on the stick. I just decided to skip that step. I'm just gonna make individual little chocolates and see how they come out. There are three things to keep in mind if you choose to try this out. One is that it takes a bit of patience depending on how detailed you wanna get. If you choose to make it easier, you could choose one color and just fill them all and call it a day. But if you'd like a little bit more detail, you can choose several different colors and go as crazy as you want. I thought the ghosts would be a good one to start with because they're not too crazy, they're not too complex, there's not a lot of detail, but what we can do is use a darker color, a brown or a black, to fill in its mouth and its eyes, and we can use the white to fill in the rest, and I'll give you guys an idea of how you do this. Second thing you wanna do is think of the chocolate as if it were paint. You're using the chocolate to paint in the candy molds. Last thing you need to do is think in layers. In this case, had we filled in this white first, it would cover in the eyes. So the white can't go first. What we want to start with is coloring in the eyes and the mouth with a darker color. Once those are in and once that sets, then we can go back in with the white. But if we start with the white, we'll lose our chance to do the eyes and the mouth. So we're gonna start by throwing some candy melts into our pods. That should be more than enough. 
The dark chocolate will be used for the ghost's eyes and mouth. Then for the rest of the ghost, we'll throw in some white. We we'll use quite a bit of that. So I'm sure we'll have to refill it, but that's a good start. And we will throw these in the microwave. We just wanna get the chocolate to the point where it is nicely melted and smooth to work with. We wanna make sure that when we do melt it, we don't burn it because there is potential for that. Then we're gonna take a small brush because we need to get into those tiny little details for the eyes and the mouth. And like I said, just like paint, we're gonna color those little spaces in the best we can. Now for the eyes. They're so tiny, tiny, tiny. I don't even know if you guys can see that. Now we're just gonna continue to do that through all the little ghosts. This is where the patience comes in. A lot of people would just throw in one color and that would be the end of it. But I think when you take the time to do these they come out so cute. When you do this too, you kind of want to wiggle the brush around to make sure that you don't get any air bubbles in there because sometimes you can put the chocolate in and you'll end up with air bubbles that got trapped. You kind of brush the chocolate around in the surface. It helps avoid that. I like to try to get it so that you can't see the mold through the chocolate and then you know there's enough there. Again, they don't have to be perfect, but I promise you when you take the time to do this, the results are so worth it. And this is why you get the brushes because it really is just like painting. But you see what I mean? I have to do these details first. You have to think in layers. And I just poured the white in. These would get covered up and we'd have no chance to attack them. Always think in layers. And depending on how long it takes you, you might have to reheat your chocolate in between. It'll start getting a little hard in the pod, but it only takes a few seconds. You can also wipe chocolate away if you feel like you've kind of gone outside the lines. Okay, we're getting close to finishing the last ghost as far as mouths and eyes go. And then we'll be able to move into the body. And the last eye. And there we have all our little ghosts with their eyes and mouths done. So we are going to set this aside and give that chocolate a second to set. While that's happening, I'm going to melt the white chocolate so that by the time I come back, these will be ready to have the white chocolate poured in. Now that the chocolate is set in the eyes and the mouth and the white chocolate melts are melted, we just wanna pour this into the mold. I'm just brushing the white chocolate around to make sure there's no bubbles on the surface layer while not going too crazy on the face because with this white chocolate sitting on top of that darker chocolate detail, it will melt it and if you do this over those details, you're gonna lose them. And I just wanna do a quick little scrape to clean it up. I could probably use a little bit more. There we go. Try to get it right up to the top. We're just gonna keep going down the line, filling each one in with the white chocolate. And we've got one more. Okay, so we're just gonna get rid of the excess chocolate the best we can. Try to level it with the top of the candy mold. While the ghosts are setting, let's move on to another candy mold. The next one we're gonna tackle are the eyeballs. So thinking in layers, if I wanna do highlights, I'm gonna have to do the highlight in the pupil first and a highlight in the iris. After I do the highlights, which would be the first layer, I'm gonna do the second layer, the pupil. Once the pupil's done, I'm going to do the iris. Once the iris is done, I'm gonna fill in the rest of the eye. So they already have like a little indent where a highlight would be. So I'm just gonna put a little white dot on top of it, just like that. And I think I'll put another little white one right out here. Now that all the highlights are done, we'll move on to the pupils. As I said before, it's really important to let the previous layer set. Once it does, you can move on to the next color or layer. Just keep in mind, the new layer is hot chocolate. So even though the previous layer has set, if you mess around with the hot chocolate too much, it will reheat the previous layer, 
and they will get muddy and mixed together. So try to work fast. The irises I decided to have some fun with, making the eyes a bunch of different colors. And the last two, I decided to do something a little different. Since eyes aren't typically one straight color, you can see other little colors and highlights within the eye. I wanted to see if I could do that with the candies. So with two, I did one color close to the pupil and then I colored the rest of the eye a solid color to get an iris made up of two colors. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, so it'll be a fun surprise. A last minute added layer was veins. One night we had a chocolate making party here at the house and my friend's daughter added veins to her eyes. I thought it was the coolest idea, so I figured I would give it a shot. I found the brush to be a little thick, so I decided to give toothpicks a try, dipping the toothpicks into the chocolate, then using the toothpick to dot little red lines onto the eyes that look like veins. I felt the veins that were made with the toothpick came out looking a lot better. Once I finished putting veins on half of the eyes, I started filling in the eyeballs with the final color, the final layer, the white. I slowly made my way from one eye to the next, filling each eye with the white. Next up were the brains, and I really didn't see any reason to do this in several different colors, so I just stuck with one. I picked a peach color candy melt, and I just went through them all, filling them all in with the one color. It was definitely the easiest <laughs> chocolate I made in this entire round. Next up were the rats, and these little suckers were tricky. I will get to why in just a second. As for the first layer, I picked a peach color and I decided to tackle the inside of the ears, the nose, and the tail with this color. For the second layer, I picked a dark brown to color in all the eyes and all the rats. This took a little bit of time because they're so tiny. For the third layer, I decided I was going to make the bodies of the rats two different colors. I was going to do a white rat and I was going to do another one that was like a light brown. To get this color, I mixed white candy melts with some dark brown candy melts. I love how this turned out. One little trick to keep in mind when mixing colors, always start with a large amount of the lighter color and add a tiny bit of the darker color at a time until you get to the color that you like. Then there were the witch's hats, and these things, oh my god, those stars and those dots were teeny tiny. I thought I was going to go cross-eyed. I tackled them for my first layer with white. To fill them in, I took the smallest brush I owned, dabbed tiny little bits of white in, and once the star was covered, I would use my finger to wipe away the excess. If you don't want to use your hands, just use a piece of clean paper towel, wipe away that extra bit of chocolate, and you'll be left with stars with clean, sharp points. Personally, with these tiny little areas, I prefer using my hands, so I just make sure I am constantly washing them. For the second layer, I decided to go with the green for the band on the hats. This section was easier to work on compared to the stars. It got a little tricky on the edges because there was no clear hard line. Otherwise, it was pretty straightforward. From there, I started the third and final layer of the hat, filling the body of the hat in with a dark purple. To get this dark purple, I mixed red and blue, using a large amount of red and adding a little bit of blue at a time. I'm really happy with how this color came out. Next up were the headstones. These things were kind of a pain in the butt. There were three different headstone designs and each one of them had their own little intricate details. You could make yourself nuts with these things. I decided to pick just a couple details on each stone to focus on and then fill the rest of it in a solid color. For the RIP stones, I colored in the RIP, then I colored in the bat and I also decided to color in the base with the same color purple. For the spiderweb stone, I decided to just tackle the spiderweb, the bunch of leaves above it, and the base of the stone, then fill in the rest of the stone with one solid color. The final headstone had a skull and crossbones design. I decided to just focus on that and filling in the base. I did the skull and crossbones in white and the base in purple like the rest of the stones. Of the three stones, I would say that this one was the easiest. Once all the detail work was done, I moved to filling in the stones, and I settled on a light brown and a light purple. Both these colors I had to mix myself. Last up were the fingers, and I love turning these into zombie fingers. I started out with a dark brown, and the plan was to make the dark brown look like dirt underneath the fingernails and the creases of the fingers and where the finger had been severed. It sounds pretty gross when you're talking about food. 
Once I was done with the brown, I pulled out that peach or orange color to color in the fingernail, and I also had to use it at the severed end of the finger for the bone because I ran out of white. Then I used red on the bloody end of the finger. Then finally I filled the entire finger in with green. I did run out of this green color eventually and I had to mix my own. I actually liked the mixed color better. One other trick that I forgot to mention when it comes to trying to avoid air bubbles in your chocolates is flicking the side of the silicone mold. As it drops back down on the table, it kind of shakes loose those air bubbles and they'll rise to the top of the chocolates. Air bubbles are not the end of the world, and with some molds, I find it almost impossible to avoid them altogether, but you do what you can to try to reduce them. When the chocolate is finally set in its mold, I'll take the sharp knife and shave down any high points. This will also give you a clean edge to the chocolates once you've popped them out of the molds. To loosen and release the chocolate from the molds, you want to slowly work your way around the mold, carefully pulling the silicone. Then you want to flip the mold over and work on releasing the chocolates from the mold one chocolate at a time. Some of the chocolates might be a little stubborn and it might take some more stretching of the mold to get them to release. The other thing you need to keep in mind, the ghosts are pretty solid, so I didn't have to worry about them, but the rats were kind of a pain in the butt because the tails were so thin. I actually lost quite a few tails on the rats trying to get them out of the mold. So some you have to be a little slower with and a little bit more patient so they don't break on you while you're trying to get them out. And the eyeballs needed a little bit more attention because I didn't use a lollipop stick. I had to go back in with my sharp knife to shave down the chocolate where it flowed into where the stick should have been. Now for the results. I would love to hear what you guys think about how they turned out. Which one's your favorite? Also, if you've done this before and you have any tips or tricks you'd like to add, please leave those in the comments below. I'm always open to learning how to make my work better and I'm sure those watching would appreciate the extra advice as well. And for those of you who have never done this before but decide to give it a try after watching this video, please let me know how it turned out. I would love to see pictures of your results. Send them to me on any one of my social media accounts. And that is all we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope everybody out there is staying safe and healthy. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.